Ackerman, and I would like to share some thoughts with you about the direction we will be moving with the design aspect of our basic bowls. Understanding how to come up with ideas for your work is the next step in our process. I'd like to take a few minutes to chat about finding inspiration for your artwork. Thus far in Ceramics, we have worked on building technical skills. You are all beginners working with clay, but you have grown tremendously in a short period of time. It is time to not only physically act like an artist, but to think and express like an artist as well. This is not an easy task for most. Just how does one infuse meaning into a piece of pottery? Many students have the belief that creativity is something you are born with or not born with. On the contrary, creativity is a skill that can be honed and developed. Artists are constant observers of the world around them and of their own thoughts and feelings. Inspiration can come from the work of other artists, from cultural influences, from responses to current and past events, and from internal feelings, thoughts, opinions, and memories. We will learn the difference between inspiration and invitation to create a piece that is inspired by the work of Native American potters, not simply a copy. Always strive for your work to be a meaningful and original expression of you. Page, click on the link for research Native American pottery and then the link for the website for cultural patina. You're going to get a redirect notice, click continue. Once you're there, you're going to have time to scan through the entire website, but first we need to focus on our goals listed on the assignment sheet, identifying interesting patterns on Native American Indian pottery. These patterns will serve as inspiration for you when you're working on your basic bowl. You're going to scroll through and you're going to look at the entire collection, all 12 pages, to get the big picture, and then you're going to zone in on a few images that really speak to you, and you will use those as inspiration for your basic goal. I'm going to go to page three, and I'm going to take a look at one piece in particular. This is a piece of pottery by a Native American artist called Lucy Lewis. You can see over here her name, Lucy Lewis when she was born, when it was from, so this pottery is, piece of pottery is from the 1960s, California, Acoma is the name of the tribe, and then over here to the left, we have the image. You hover over the image and you get a zoom in of the line pattern, which can be really helpful. In addition, when you look at this piece from different points of view, notice how much the pattern changes. It's really important for you to understand how all these lines intersect. Line thickness, direction, proximity, and repetition are aspects that we're going to be analyzing and observing. It's also really valuable to look at the artist's signature. You never know where inspiration is going to come from. Once you've connected with the piece, you are ready to begin sketching. Let's review some basic types of line and the meanings they convey. Horizontal lines feel calm and peaceful. They are grounded like the earth and have a sense of steadiness and reliability. Vertical lines are powerful and strong. They reach upwards and symbolize growth. Diagonal lines are full of movement. They are dynamic rather than static and feel alert and alive. Curved lines feel soft and loose. They have a feeling of unity and connection. Zigzag lines create a feeling of chaos and confusion. They can make the viewer feel uneasy or anxious. Lines should be used thoughtfully in the structure of your piece, as well as on the surface to communicate with the viewer. Created using Powtoon. In closing, I would like you to remember that when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. There is inspiration for your artwork everywhere within you and in the world around you. Try looking at the world through the mindset of an artist.